Stefan. Stefan Schweinfest is the director of the United Nations Statistics Division here in New York, and I would like to hand over to you now, Stefan, for your welcome remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Alex, uh, and uh, good morning from New York. And I know for some people around the globe, it's afternoon or evening, so welcome uh, coming here, and thank you for coming here and connecting. Uh, I was promised uh, that I would talk to a large group and an enthusiastic group of data scientists and statisticians, and I certainly didn't want to miss that opportunity. I can see the group is already large. If I look at the counter on top, it's 150, so you are a big group, and I have no doubts that you are enthusiastic if you uh, connect this. I to, with us, and I love the logo of this datathon. This little man that looks very dynamic and enthusiastic, and is running. And um, I'm hoping that uh, you are equally uh, dynamic and in there for pass possibly winning the race, but not only winning. This is um, you all have skills that I certainly don't have. So I'm also as a director of the United Nations, uh, very grateful that you're connecting and bringing your skills to our table. What do we do here at the United Nations? What do I specifically do? I mean, we work on data and statistics, we collect them and we bring those data to the table for the policy agendas and for the solutions that that we have uh, of the many challenges and problems in the in the in the on the globe and we are a community of official statisticians these are my counterparts in the countries or the chief statisticians of countries and that is what we call the statistical commission and this whole event is under the program of the statistical commission on big data so uh, we have a lot of national level connections maybe the one or the other from you is also connected with the national statistical office and i'm thankful to a number of countries uh, uruguay brazil canada china indonesia rwanda the united arab emirates and the uk who are part of the organization of this event and when you do something big like that, you can only do it together. So you will be challenged uh, to find uh, practical data solutions to the many big development challenges that we have. You know the United Nations is working to achieving the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030, and this is a very important year because we are basically in the middle of that uh, course, if we keep the running metaphor, and there is still quite uh, some ground to cover and data are an important enabler to help to solve development problems. We better understand with data what the problems are and we can monitor whether we are moving in the right directions and whether our policy solutions are producing the results that we want them to produce. So this is for me one of the most critical uh, functions and I'm very glad that you are here as I said, bringing your skills to the table, help making a small but important contributions to solving the big problems of this world. And who knows, something that you may create here in your team may find its way to a national uh, program or even an international program. So I'm also particularly glad that we are doing this together with the UN Youth Group. Of course, young people have uh, um, a lot more IT skills than my generation would have, but also all the problems that we are facing are particularly relevant for the young people because it's your world in the future. You will be called upon to sit in my chair in, in a couple of years and to run and manage uh, this planet. And that's why it is important that you as young people come and connect, play with us and connect with us early to contribute your ideas, your visions, your solutions. So today is a little bit of a competition, I understand, uh, but keeping, and it may be that you win a prize, but maybe not in keeping with the Olympic theme that we had at the beginning, I would like to uh, emphasize that participation is everything because one of the most important prize that you may win in this whole exercise is to get to know somebody and to connect with peers and friends 
and similar minded people in other countries. And I can tell you one thing that after a long career in the statistics uh, business, one of my most rewarding uh, feelings always was being part of a global professional community and meeting many like minded people around the globe that are having similar ideas and working hard towards the same solutions. So welcome to everybody. I'm very glad that you're here. Thank you on behalf of the United Nations. And my last word is simply have fun. Thank you. Thanks so much, Stefan, for your uh, kind words and for your uh, welcome of the participants of this webinar. Uh, I would like to hand over now to Ronald Janssen. Uh, Ronald Janssen is the Chief of Data Innovation and Capacity Branch of UNST. And together with his team, he coordinates the work of the United Nations or uh, of the United Nations statistical community on big data and data science. So over to you now, Ronald. Um, please go ahead. Thank you. And uh, Alex, could you please uh, sh share the uh, the screen? I'll I'll take the uh, the first I'll do few. That. Uh, yeah. So uh, welcome everyone. Um, Yes, I think it is um, a great opportunity um, to uh, get uh, uh, data scientists and statisticians from around the world, especially from the younger generation, to uh, to work with us. Uh, so we, us, that is the um, community of official statistics. That's where we're coming from. Uh, our division, as Stefan just indicated, we are supporting national statistical officers around the world, uh, and and specifically now in in the area of how can we use uh, new data and um, uh, so new data sources, new technologies, data science and and all of the available um, tools in the digital age. How can we use this uh, to help uh, the cause of the of the United Nations uh, to help uh, achieve the sustainable development goals uh, in one way or another? Um, you will see uh, to, in today's uh, webinar. Um, um, our partners, uh, they will explain in more detail uh, the practical side of uh, what we are doing with the Datathon. Uh, so this is the picture of the organizing uh, team. Uh, so we from the UN Statistics Division in New York are working on this. As, as mentioned by Stefan, we are very happy that we are working with the major group for uh, children and youth. Um, and this is not the first time that we're working with them. And we're very happy to do so because, uh, as mentioned, the uh, uh, youth teams are, are the teams that that we we think uh, are very creative and and uh, can come up with with solutions that we might not think of in the first place. Other partners here, uh, Global Partnership for Sustainable Development Data. This is in relation to the uh, Festival de Datos in Uruguay, and we will hear about that, uh, as we will hear also from the Statistical Office of Uruguay. And then we have uh, four. Um, Big data hubs. Uh, so these are um, uh, these are hubs um, which are run by uh, national statistical offices in UAE, Brazil, China, and Rwanda. But they serve um, to help uh, the statistical community in their regions to see how we can use big data, how we can use data science to uh, uh, to to be more. Um, timely to, to be able to produce more frequent and, and more granular data uh, for all of the challenges that we face. If we go to the next slide, please. Yes, um, the context in which we are working here in the Datathon. So one context, uh, you will hear uh, a lot about this in the in the upcoming month, is the, uh, the Sustainable Development Goals Summit, uh, which will take place here in New York. Um, in some way or another, our datathon is also related to that. We're trying to find solutions for uh, for global and local challenges, and and all of those challenges in one way have to do uh, with how we can improve uh, lives of people, how we can improve the the health of the planet, and and how we can improve prosperity for societies. And and those are the main pillars of the uh, of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Um, we did last November, in November 2022, with our community of official statistics, we held an international conference on big data and data science in uh, Indonesia under the theme of uh, global challenges and the importance of relevant and, and timely data. 
if, if you would look at that website, you see all kinds of things that, that, that we are doing, uh, but that's also the kind of uh, data sources and tools that we would like you to think about when you participate in the Datathon. Um, we started out with our community to work on big data, uh, like uh, we, we have uh, real-time data which will be available for you on, on every ship uh, on open sea and um, uh, around the world at, uh, at at any given time. So that's a that's a very val valuable data set if you do anything around uh, uh, maritime or, uh, or or coastal or environmental issues around that. Uh, we do use uh, Earth observation data, but we also use a lot more of other data sources nowadays, and we will make those uh, available for you. If I go to the next slide. Thank you. Uh, so, so your ideas matter. I think that's the basic objective of this uh, datathon. Um, we have a lot of global challenges. Uh, I mean, climate action, climate change, uh, severe weather patterns. Um, we have uh, displacement of people. We have uh, sc scrolling, um, sprawling urban areas. We have food security. We have a lot of other challenges where at the global level, but which have a, a, a specific local impact. And if you can come up with, with local solutions, uh, those local solutions might be scalable to other areas uh, as well. So think about what you could do locally. For instance, uh, in, the, in the last editions of uh, what we then call the hackathon, we had like um, uh, food price prices or uh, inflation being very high in Lebanon, making it very difficult for uh, uh, for poorer families to uh, to get a, a decent uh, uh, food uh, basket. And uh, the winning team had uh, um, provided the tool that would make distribution of food to those families uh, with uh, with a basket of food uh, according to their needs. Uh, available and, and and that's a local solution, but I think could also be applied in in other countries as well. Uh, another example was uh, the help of uh, of local farmers in Uganda uh, during the time of COVID. So very local uh, solutions, but but some of those uh, which can also be applied in other countries. Um, we are having teams from all around the world, so please keep that in mind. We will make Slack channels available so you can also communicate with what other teams are doing, uh, that you get, can get also this feel that it's not you just uh, with your team uh, wherever you are working on this. There are other teams there. Uh, we also hope that you reach out to other teams, either to ask questions or maybe to give, give them your experiences and your tips about what you could do. Uh, maybe if you have found some solutions to, to one of the data sources that we use, you could also share that. If I go to uh, the next slide, and this will be my last slide, we, we have a lot of partners. I hope you can see a little bit what's on this screen. A lot of partners which, which we've already mentioned. Uh, we do also want to um, mention uh, 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 two um, uh, um, to other uh, groups, uh, which is one is the privacy enhancing technology group. Uh, this is with Oblivious and Open Mind. Um, so we will have within the Datathon also some data sources uh, that we will um, anonymize and otherwise uh, encrypt uh, so you can interrogate those data and use it with, uh, with open source data. Um, but the uh, the way you use uh, privacy enhancing technologies to do so might also uh, give you a a price if you do this in a uh, uh, in a um, innovative and creative way. Uh, we have technology partners here. You see AWS and Esri, uh, and Esri will also um, give this geospatial angle. Uh, one of the uh, criteria for your solution should be that it should some some geospatial components should be in there. And as we as a partner will help us also uh, make you make tools available so that you can so that you can do that. So with that, I will I'll stop here. I hope that this will be a very exciting journey for you. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to this to see all the teams around this world working on uh, on data science projects. Back to you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ronald. Um, we will now during the next ten minutes or so. 
we will continue with Abitius Matthew and Umaima Makluk, who both volunteer in the UN Major Group for Children and Youth, and who collaborated very closely in the organization of uh, past UN hackathons, and also, of course, in this year's uh, UN Datathon. So uh, we will also have with us uh, Jayu Seng, who works in the trade statistics section of UNSD's economic statistics branch. So I will over hand over to Abhijit now and I will share my screen again. Thank you. Uh, hi, uh, good morning, good evening, everyone. Uh, I hope I am audible, right? Yeah. Yes. So uh, welcome to the first edition for the first uh, webinar of the UN Datathon. So what the UN Datathon is, uh, as previously mentioned, uh, following the Youth Hackathon of the 2020 and uh, the UN BDH of the 2022, uh, the UN Glo Datathon 2023 is a global data science competition which is organized by the partners mentioned before and in conjunction with the Festival de Datos, which is happening in Punta del Este, Uruguay. And the Datathon would happen from the 3rd to the 6th of November. So teams from all around the world would be invited to take part in this competition. And uh, the, the teams would be asked to find data-driven and innovative solutions in line with the theme that will be revealed uh, closer to the start of the competition a week before. So we, the teams are invited to address uh, global and local challenges and create innovative solutions for us. Could you go to the next slide? Right, so a bit on the background and objectives. Uh, as I've mentioned before, the Datathon aims at finding and facilitating individuals to find innovative solutions to global and local challenges that could help achieve or implement, accelerate the implementation of the SDGs. And uh, it, we expect the teams and we pr promote the teams to provide innovative solutions. Uh, moving on. Uh, so the Datathon, as Stefan and Ronald has mentioned, is an excellent networking opportunity. Uh, you would be working and participating with teams all across the world and teams comprising from uh, individuals that could be teenagers, uh, teams with only teenagers and teams with data experts and professionals in the field. And you would also be exposed to state-of-the-art data analysis, analysis tools and methods. So all of the teams that are selected to take part in the Datathon would have access to the UN global platform and would have a dedicated team workspace there. So you would have uh, be exposed to the best data analysis tools out there on the, on the globe. And you would also, it is also a competition, as mentioned, there is very, very good prices that is awaiting the winners and uh, in possibilities of incubators for the winning projects. And it also is a learning opportunity. So we do not just encourage people experts on data science. We encourage teams from uh, who are beginning us in data science or who are just learning. We want you to join the Datathon as well so that it is an excellent learning opportunity as well as it is a competition. Uh, on to the next slide. If uh, so some of the practical information regarding uh, the UN Datathon 2023. So uh, this year around teams from three to teams with three to five participants could come together and form a team and apply for the UN Datathon. So uh, one thing to note that individual registrations isn't allowed this time around. So you have to form a team of three to five participants and you can find the application link in the website and we'll drop it in the chat as well. So the team application would ask for your basic info, the team name, the main location where the team would be coming from, and some of the team composition information as well. The bio, whether you're a, either in, or a student or in academia, or you're a working professional in data science as well. The application would also ask for motivation and your background in data science, and your motivation to join the UN Datathon and this global competition as well. So once you apply for the Datathon and once selected, you will be invited to set up your team workspace, as I mentioned, in the UN Global Platform, and you would have access to it. And uh, additional information uh, on your team members would also be collected from there. So uh, from there, uh, we have organized, we are organizing 
a couple of trainings and webinars that will prepare you on this road to the 2023 UN Datathon. And on November 3rd to the 6th, you will take part in, in this global competition, uh, whether on site or online throughout the world. Uh, could we go to the next slide? Yeah. So, what are the expected outputs, the deliverables for the Datathon? So, the teams would have to use data and geospatial data and all of the other uh, data sets, public data sets, uh, open source data sets, and the data sets that we would provide and use these data to find innovative and analytical solutions that would address global or local challenges or create solutions for any global or local problems. And that would help achieve this SDG, is the Sustainable Development Goals. And this uh, would be following a theme that would be revealed closer to the data the hack datathon. So the deliverables, the, the teams that would must submit at the end of the datathon would be three. The first one being a presentation explaining the solution, which could be a PPT or PDF or, or some or any other free format, a video with a maximum length of 10 minutes uh, that explains what their solution or their project is. Uh, this could easily be a voiceover over the presentations that you've submitted or any other creative uh, means that you would like to take up. And the third deliverable and the final deliverable would be the coding scripts that you use for uh, coming up with your project and all of the coding scripts that have used and all of the data sets that you have used must be submitted uh, as part of your final project. So these are the expected outputs for at the end of the datathon that the teams are expected to submit. So I now hand over to Umeima to show you some of the examples of, of the outputs that we had had from the previous editions of the datathon or the hackathon. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Abhijit. Um, so we know we always have a lot of questions with regards to what exactly is expected uh, of you guys during the datathon. And just a disclaimer, we're showcasing the two winning teams projects. Uh, so we're not expecting that all the teams participating in the hackathon have an advanced or an intermediate level. We also accept beginning teams. It's part of the experience. It's going to teach you a lot about data science. And you can come up with different solutions, whether it is a report. We had some teams win awards last year for putting together excellent reports showcasing great analysis of the, of the data sets. We also had teams that developed uh, advanced machine learning algorithms, and we also had teams that put together some prototypes of interactive dashboards. But we still wanted to show you two of you know the winning teams output from last year. Uh, we had two tracks. So the first example is from Team Data I from Lebanon. Uh, who was the overall uh, youth winning team of uh, last year's hackathon. And what they did, um, and we can go over the video, is develop this prototype um, that really tried to answer um, a very clear question on how to optimize the distribution of food parcels in Lebanon, uh, which is where they came from. The way that this prototype works, as you can see, is that they're able to select um, certain uh, commodities uh, with their brands and get an optimized um, distribution of where the most vulnerable populations are in Lebanon and what the recommendation is using their uh, random forest regressor uh, as to how to distribute these food parcels across the country. Um, so they definitely like put together a project that was very much uh, in line with the context and global context in Lebanon, as well as other countries in the world, trying to answer SDG2 on foot hunger, zero hunger. Um, and as you can see, this is definitely like ideas that we are very interesting and can be actually developed further uh, potentially and like implemented further. So these are the types of ideas that we really like and that we hope you like as well. So the second team uh, was actually the winning team. Um, from the uh, big data experts track. Um, they are the team setters data from Indonesia. And what they did was develop a um, prototype for, again, like uh, a dashboard. And we're not expecting you all to work on a dashboard. These are just like what happened with the two winning teams. And what they did was basically rely on a data science library, which is called Neo4G. They relied on AI's data that was provided to them by the UN. And their idea here was in line with a lot of crises in the world, such as the, U the Ukraine war. Uh, how can we actually optimize um, making sure there are no delays or inefficiencies 
the shipment of goods across the world from one port to the other. So using the data science library, they put together and they used different algorithms to be able to cluster uh, the countries into their ports, rank them, and then be able to use algorithms that will find the optimal routes um, to ship from one port to the other. Um, and they, in that case, relied on AIS open source, like data that was maintained by the UN. So, you know, in a summary with regards to these examples, um, there are different things that you can do. The most important thing, as you can see, is that they really try to solve a real issue, the Lebanon food crisis, as well as what Ukraine war are causing to shipments around the world. And this is really what we're trying to end, like put, push forward, um, as well as something that will be in line with the theme. With regards to another question that is asked very frequently is how are we going to be judged, especially because teams are going to put forward different solutions again. Um, this is like a tentative uh, first draft of the judging criteria. This will be approved later on and shared before the hackathon starts so that you know what to expect. But overall, we're looking into five main parts, which are the theme, whether your team was able to develop a solution that was in line with the theme that will be shared right before the hackathon, sorry, the data thought so that no one, uh, you know, everyone is on the same page. Uh, the innovation spirit is the team's idea out of the box. Is it something exciting, new, or something that will be developed further and is innovative overall? Where the methods are going to be used, uh, whether there's going to be like algorithms used, whether you're going to use like Power BI to put forward some really nice visuals, all of these things are taken into account with regards to the methods. The presentation, as you know, we expect from you to have both a PowerPoint presentation or PDF presentation, as well as a video. So being able to convey your message and have a good team dynamic where you share your results, how you thought about the process, because the process is important. It's not just the results. All of this is taken into account uh, as we look into your video and your presentation. And finally, the visualization. As you know, like we had teams last year that were not as advanced that put forward some really good uh, reports and they still won awards because the visuals was on point, conveyed a really strong message. And that's also something that we look into when we look into your solutions. Finally, you know, the very big question is what awards am I going to get? Um, so you have to know that all the teams will be receiving a certificate of participation. Uh, each team member will be receiving a certificate of participation once the team has submitted their uh, solution. Uh, on top of this, we are working on the awards and we're just giving you a non-comprehensive list of examples of awards that we had in previous editions and we also want to have in this edition. Uh, of course, there will be one to third place overall uh, for, you know, the teams will also dedicate awards to youth teams because we want to encourage youth teams as part of a youth organization to participate in the datathon. Uh, we'll have university and high school best students, best teams for each of the regions. Uh, we'll have best visualization and presentation, uh, best solution using AIS vessel tracking data, and best solution using privacy enhancing te technology. So there's a really a wide range of awards on top of the certificate of uh, participation. And of course, what is more awarding than be able to network with a great, uh, you know, te like teams of fellow data scientists, fellow data enthusiasts, as well as experts in the field. That's also hopefully a great award to participate in the data fund and learn. Uh, it's going to be an intense but rewarding experience for you. So now I'll pass it on to uh, Jiawe so that we can go over the data -ton timeline. And thank you. Well, thank you, Omaima. Hello, everyone. Now, let me introduce the timeline of the UN Datathon. So this year, we have already started to call for applications since July. You can go to our website and start your application. Well, for this year's Datathon, we plan to arrange four webinars with different topics for you. Today, here is our first webinar, and we plan to hold the second webinar on September 7th which will be introduced more about the sustainable development goals and how can use engage in the sustainable development. After this, we will be really close to the deadline for the UN Data Science application, which will be September 30th. So please do submit your application as soon as possible before the hard deadline. After passing the pre-screening, the approved teams will be notified by October 10th. 
Well, during the registration, you can indicate whether you would like to participate physically in one of our venues or online. If your team wants to participate physically, please note it that the teams have to support their own stay at the location somewhere, and we do not really have special funding available for that. Next, in October, we would provide some online trainings for you to learn about how to use the geospatial data and how to use automatic identification system data. I hope the training will be useful for you. The third webinar will be held on October 19th, and that would focus on data sources and analysis. During that webinar, you will learn about like how to use our platform, and we would also introduce what data sources we would provide to you. So the last webinar, which is the pre data sum webinar, will be held on October 26, which will be one week before the start of the data sum. In that webinar, we would review the theme of this year's data song that your project should focus on and also introduce the details of the arrangement and logistics. So that will be very important for the attending teams. Therefore, please remember to attend the pre data song webinar. And to remind you about all the dates, you can join our mailing list to be updated. You can find the link of joining the mailing list on our official website. All right, next page, please. Uh, so this year's UN Data Sun will be happened over the course of four days from November 3rd to November 6th. On day one, we would firstly have an opening ceremony at 2 p.m. Montevideo time, that is uh, UTC minus three. And after this, the Data Sun will officially start on November 3rd at 3 p.m. Montevideo time, UTC minus three, which is 6 p.m. the coordinated universal time. Then you can start to work on your data song project during the following days. And the deliverables must be submitted by the last day, November 6, before 10 a.m. Montevideo time, UTC minus three, which is 1 p.m. coordinated universal time. So the team based in some areas like Asia or Middle East, uh, you may would start at late night on November 3rd, but then you would have almost all of uh, the Monday, November 6th to still work on it. So all in all, every team will have a total of 67 hours for the data sign. And after the data sign, the festival the data would be held in Uruguay from November 7th to November 9th. And maybe some of your projects will be shown on the festival. Next, we plan to announce the winning teams on December 19th. And we would hold the UN Data Sun Award Ceremony next year on January 18th. During the ceremony, the top three winners would have the opportunity to present their solutions and receive awards. All right, that's all for the timeline. If you have any questions, you can ask us during the Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you uh, to all three of you for, for this presentation on the details of the data thong. Uh, I guess it's important to point out again that most participants will join the data thon online remotely, but we will have also the possibility to uh, for participants to join the data thon uh, on site at various locations. So over the course of the next 10 minutes, uh, we will share with you information, first of all, about the Festival de Datos, which will take place right after the UN Datathon, and also about the uh, main venue of the Datathon in Montevideo, Uruguay. Um, and after that, we will also share some information, or we uh, you will hear also about the um, satellite locations of the Datathon. So we kick off our journey around the world now with Freddy Rodriguez, who is the Senior Regional Manager for Latin America and the Caribbean at the Global Partnership for Sustainable Development Data, uh, the organizers of the Festival de Datos. And after that, we continue with 
uh, Federico Segui, who is the Deputy Director General of the National Statistics Institute of Uruguay, INE. And INE is our local host in Uruguay for this datathon. I will share my screen again. Thank you. Ready, all yours. Thank you, Alexander. Um, thank you for this welcoming. I'm very happy to be here to share a bit of the data festival. So let me see if I can share my screen. Uh, ready, I have sh I'm sharing the slides, it's okay. Ah, okay, so you have the slides, okay. Yes, yeah, yes, So no worries. So the Festival de Datos is an event that looks on the way to celebrate data. So how we can actually uh, seek for opportunities to close data gaps and to contribute to the monitoring process of the sustainable development goals. But in general sense about sustainability and the use of data as well. And let me tell you a bit of what the Global Partnership is about. So we as a Global Partnership were actually started in 2015 together with the SDGs in a way to contribute from different angles uh, from the civil society, from the private sector, academia, and also the governments to close those data gaps that I just mentioned. We have more than 700 partners. We have also several governments that are part of our um, partnership as well. We have developed more than 120 partnership, which means that we bring together our partners at the national, regional, and global level to also um, have projects and also different processes together across more than 35 countries in Africa, Latin America, and some Asian countries as well. We have more than 20, uh, 244 convenes. One of those is the Data Festival. Please let next slide. And the Festival de Datos, this is actually our second Festival de Datos. The first one was organized in Bristol in 2018 in Bristol in the UK, and it was the opportunity to bring some of our partners. In this second occasion, the Festival de Datos uh, in Uruguay, Punta del Este, we plan to bring more partners, more organizations as well, even partners that are no uh, integrated or organizations that are not part of the global partnership. We would like to bring them on board so that they can also celebrate during the data festival as well. What we are planning to have during the Festival de Datos, we plan to strengthen data communities and their availability as well, um, to unlock the value of data. So in this part is really important. What is the value of data? What are the benefits of data? And also how this can contribute to make the Sustainable Development Goals or the SDGs a reality to catalyze also partnerships and to actually motivate and to see more innovations about the use of data as well. So we know that there are more technologies, artificial intelligence and different dynamics from different sectors. We would like to showcase what is happening throughout the world and how this can contribute in different areas related to sustainable development. The event, as we mentioned, will happen in Punta del Este, Uruguay, in November the 6th till the 9th. Um, and this will actually elevate National Statistical Office, especially those that are from small uh, countries, so that they can see opportunities of how they can integrate those innovations into their activities as well. The festival is, yes, it's a forum, and we know it's an event, but it, as I mentioned, it's a way to celebrate, to have peer exchanges, to also have networking, and also to see and to explore practical data solutions. That's our aim, and that's the focus that the data festival is, uh, will have. This is actually organized together, as you can see on, on, on the part of above and, and also below the, the slides as well. Uh, this is organized with the National Statistical Office of Uruguay, the government of Uruguay as well, the Open Government Agency of Uruguay and other ministries as well, and the Global Partnership. Next slide, please. Some of the principles that we have in the data festival is that 
we would like to have a festival that is accessible and inclusive. So we'd like to have a diversity of partners, of participants from different sectors, from different areas of work as well, and from different communities that can actually be uh, present during the data festival. Also to showcase collaboration and be practical and useful. And by practical, we mean how useful is those methods, methodologies and ways that they are actually collaborating. Sometimes it's not only to think about the data, but actually how the data is useful, how the data actually connects with policymakers as well. And also, um, we would like to bring learning experiences that are empowering. So those learning experiences could be actually bad experiences, something that didn't work. We would like actually to see those experiences being presented during the festival as well to be co-created. So we are co-creating this um, data festival and we will have actually uh, an agenda in the next um, two weeks to be available and you can see the sessions. And we will focus also on environmental sustainability and sustained progress. So not only the practical cases are for specific purposes, how we can scale these two other things as well. Next slide, please. The three pillars that we work uh, during the festival will be timely data, which is basically harnessing the data and the use for environmental climate data systems as well. Administrative data, for example, uh, how this could be actually worked together with the national statistical offices, different actors to actually have timely data, inclusive data is really, really important. So to have a multi-stakeholder approach to have diversity of communities, citizen generated data is really important in this component of inclusive data. And then finally, accountable data governance. So we have a project also that is called the Data Values Project and is focusing on data governance, including inclusive data as well, um, data stewardship and other components that are within the uh, accountable data uh, aspects and also how we can have better open data and to be working with different sectors as well. Next slide, please. Some of the figures that we uh, are planning to have here, around 600 attendees, more than 300 global and regional organizations attending the festival. We already have registrations from more than 50 countries uh, that are planning to attend the festival. Even though we were planning to have a festival from seven till the nine, we now have a four days um, festival starting on day zero, which is November the 6th in the afternoon with some events um, that are also part of the main agenda. And again, these are events related to the three components that I mentioned, timely data, inclusive data, and also data governance as well. Next slide, please. Some of the sessions that we have and formats will be impact showcase, networking, ideas labs, hands on training. So we'll have a few trainings as well during the festival, uh, round tables, a uh, few field trips. One of those actually will be related to education. Uh, probably Federico can mention about this is related to the project that Uruguay is leading um, on one laptop per child. So we're planning to have this kind of field trips to showcase not only how data is important, but actually how data is used for decision making uh, and actually how a country such as Uruguay is implementing the use of data. Next slide, please. Just to show you a little bit of Punta del Este and you get motivated to join us in Punta del, Punta del Este, these are some of the photos that we have. It's a beautiful city by the coast. Um, it's actually located um, by the Atlantic coast uh, of uh, Uruguay. We will be there just before we started uh, summer. Uh, so I, we expect to have a very good weather during the festival. Um, there are very good locations and very interesting places to visit. Uruguay is a very interesting country as well to visit. And Punta del Este is one of the most important cities in Latin America. So very happy to host you and actually uh, with Federico and Ine, Uruguay will be happy to have you there. Next slide. And then the final slide is to showcase 
what is the venue. So this will be held in the convention center of Punta del Este, is the larger, largest convention center in the city. Uh, we will have stands, different actors presenting their cases, the sessions that are part of the agenda. So we very much welcome also the opportunities for you to join the festival, obviously together with the data tone that will happen in Montevideo, about two hours from Punta del Este. Um, and this is also an opportunity to connect with a, a larger community of actors and data uh, for development actors that are working towards a better world and actually working together along with the SDGs agenda. Thank you very much. I think the next slide is just um, a thank you. And we actually welcome you to register and I will actually share the link for everyone to register to the festival. Thank you, Alexander and everyone. Thank you, uh, Freddy. So I hand over directly to Federico. Federico, please go ahead. Um, good morning, good evening, uh, good afternoon uh, to everyone. Um, thank you, Alex. It's my pleasure to to to, to be here um, uh, speaking about uh, the, the 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 venue of the on-site data in, in in Montevideo, Uruguay. Um, next slide, please. Um, let, let, let me tell you that the, the INE, uh, the National Statistical Institute, uh, is the agency responsible for the production, supervision, and coordination of official statistics. It is the coordination or coordinator of the national statistical system in, in Uruguay. Um, and also, the INE is actively uh, promoting the use of new data sources like the data to produce statistics uh, in, in, in 2021 uh, in a successfully organized uh, a hackathon or data for, for the local community of, of researchers and, and data scientists. Um, and well, we also, I mean, we, uh, in a, uh, it's the host of, of, of the data in, in Montevideo, but we also host and, and co-organizes the, the Festival de Datos in, in Punta del Este, uh, as uh, Freddy already mentioned. Uh, next slide, please. Um, let's have a look at, uh, of the Dataton venue in, in, in Montevideo. Uh, it will be at the Ines building. Uh, it is located in a, in a centric area of Montevideo, the capital city. Um, at, at, at the city center, uh, old town uh, area. Uh, here at the, at, the, um, at the photo in the right, you may see uh, one of the main squares um, of Montevideo, the Independence Square. Uh, on the left side of the, of the picture, you may see the president uh, of the Republic building. Uh, and behind that building uh, is the Ines building here on, 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 the, on the left uh, picture. Um, both buildings are, are connected by a bridge, but it is a modern, uh, modern nice building, uh, very comfortable. And for the data tone, we'll, we'll, uh, we will use uh, uh, rooms located in both buildings, but the, the, the main room is in the Ines um, um, building. Um, next slide, please. Here uh, at the left uh, picture, um, we have the main room for 80 or 100 uh, people in, in a classroom format or, or, or less people in, in, in a format with, with tables uh, to organize uh, different groups. Um, this room can be divided into two smaller uh, rooms by, by, by this, this panel, as you may see in the picture. Um, we have um, two projectors uh, and dedicated internet connection uh, for streaming or, or uh, online um, data access. And there are other areas uh, at the building for having coffee breaks uh, outside of rooms. Uh, also, we have additional rooms for, for two to 30 uh, people for, for, for training 
activities and, 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 and meetings. Um, uh, yes, uh, I, yes, thank you. Um, the closing uh, ceremony of the uh, that uh, will be on Monday, 6 November, and at 10 a.m., as uh, our colleagues uh, already mentioned it. Um, and after that, uh, participants could go to the to the city of, of, of Punta del Este to participate uh, at the Festival de Atos, and uh, buses will be provided for, for, for that purpose. So, uh, yes, I'll switch to, to Spanish. <laughs> um, durante la, el, el, la Tatón podrán, podrán aportar soluciones eh, basadas en datos para un futuro eh, sostenible. Tendrán la oportunidad de, de colaborar con otros colegas y, y desarrollar aplicaciones, herramientas o, o, o modelos estadísticos innovadores eh, basados en datos, utilizando eh, tanto datos geofaciales eh, como otras fuentes de, de información. Eh, como como eh, comentaron los colegas anteriormente, tenemos premios específicos para el mejor equipo de jóvenes, eh, y bueno, los proyectos ganadores tendrán eh, la oportunidad de asociarse con, con agencias internacionales y escalar las soluciones para, eh, para su aplicación en, en la vida real. Eh, creemos que es una excelente oportunidad y bueno, los, los esperamos. Ahí está todo el equipo este, listo para, para la Datatón. Uh, we are waiting for you. Thank you. Muchas gracias, Federico. Thank you so much. Uh, so after showing you what activities are taking place in Uruguay, uh, we are now going to visit our satellite locations around the globe who will also offer on-site activities during the datathon. So our speakers come from the United Arab Emirates, China, Brazil and Rwanda. Um, so each speaker will have about three to five minutes. So we will start with Turaya Al Hashimi, who is the executive director for digital data enabling sector of the federal competitiveness and Statistics Center in the UAE. We will then continue with Bay Brian Yugao from the Survey Office of the National Bureau of Statistics, NBS of China. And after that, we will hear Andrea Dinis da Silva, who is a professor and researcher at the National School of Statistical Science of the Brazilian Institute of Geography and Statistics, IPGE. And we will end our journey around the globe with Therese Wimana, uh, Director of Data Revolution and Big Data of the National Institute of Statistics of Rwanda. So let us start uh, with our first speaker and actually uh, Turaya uh, can't be with us today, so she has sent a video message. So let me play that. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh from Asani United Arab Emirates. I wish you a good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all data experts and visionaries across the globe. The Federal Competitiveness and Statistics Center in the UAE, on behalf of the UAE Regional Hub, welcomes you to this webinar. The UAE Regional Hub is one of four UN regional platforms for big data serving the MENA region community based out of Dubai. The Hub represents our constant manifestation to our capabilities for accelerating in the field of data science in the region by providing access to data and leading technologies, setting up and supporting environment in the region to nature advanced data talents is crucial for achieving SDG. With a focus on boosting the effectiveness of AI and big data utilization. In 2022 UN Big Data Hackathon, several regional teams were recognized for their contribution. Notably, the Data I team from Lebanon secured the first place in the youth category. Additionally, GraphLoud received the Key Contributor Award, and the Sustainable Youth Hackers team earned the Best Teen Award. A true inspiration to all of us. So, are you ready to make a real impact to the world, to shape a future that's more sustainable, to drive by innovation, 
you can definitely do this by using your passion for the data science and statistics. We invite you to join us in a remarkable journey. It's not just a dream, it's an opportunity waiting for you. The 2023 UN Datathon is here. It's your stage, your spotlight, your chance to turn data into an impact, a chance to harness your technology, skills, and expertise to create innovation solutions that can truly change the world. Imagine working alongside with brilliant mindset from around the globe, pooling your talent to tackle some humanity's most pressing challenges. We're talking about using the power of data to fuel progress, the power to change life, to collaborate in teams, accessing vast data set, embracing cutting edge technologies is now just one step away. This is not a competition, it is a learning journey. This is your opportunity to learn, to innovate, to create something that matters. Sustainable development goals are our roadmap to a brighter future. And you, you are the navigator, you are the innovator, and you are the game changer. Your insights can drive real change. And the 2023 UN Datathon is your platform. Develop data-driven applications, tools, or statistical models. Use geospatial data to empower, communicate, to drive policies, decision, and to foster growth, your skills are needed. Ready to drive in? No matter if you are just starting in your data science, statistics, or economics, this is your space, your time. Your skills are gold, and they are needed more than ever. The UAE Regional Hub has your back. On the 3rd November, we are hosting a satellite event, a hub that inspires your knowledge. You will connect with fellow dreamers, share ideas, learn from best. More information on the venue and the timing will be sent out closer to the time. So keep an eye on your mailbox. Are you ready to set up? Ready to transfer data into real change? It's time to make your mark, to innovate, to be part of something incredible. Join us on this amazing journey of innovation, exploration, and problem solving. The 2023 UN Datathon is waiting for you. Let's create a more sustainable, resilient, and fair world together. Let's turn your passion into progress. Register now and let your data skills make a difference. So this was the United Arab Emirates, and we continue right away with... Uh, alaikum. Sorry with our colleague, uh, Brian Yugao from China. Brian, it's all yours. Thank you, Alex. Uh, firstly, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening uh, for all the youngsters from the world. Uh, this is Brian from United Nations Global Platform China Hub. And firstly, I'd like to introduce you to China Hub. Uh, the China Hub was established in 2020 based in Hangzhou, a very beautiful eastern city of China, with mission and vision to bring innovative technologies and data science approaches to the common application of big data and provide a much needed platform to further promote data science projects, not only in China, but also in the Asia Pacific region. Uh, secondly, we have held actually with our partners, uh, UN, UNSD, MGCY, and other regional hubs to hold a uh, hackathon for three years. And uh, we strongly you know, believe it is a unique opportunity for you and for your team, for all the youngsters from the globe, and for all the data scientists, statisticians, to learn and develop skills of big data. And it's your time to use your skills to address the global challenge. And it's, it is your time to use your skills to create the solutions for global, for SDG. And the time is calling for your wisdom. And the time is calling for your creation of innovation solutions and to facilitate the treatment of the SDGs. So uh, on behalf of China Hub, we call up talents from Asia Pacific region to register to join the data thumb. And uh, now it's your time to make a difference. So uh, nextly, I'd like to uh, shift to Chinese. Uh, 
呃，今年我们呃二零二三联合国大数据黑客松首次设立了中国赛区，除了我们的全球赛，还有中国赛区。我们也欢迎我们中国的青年啊、呃，中国的大数据专家、研究人员、从业人员和青年人员。一同来参与，一同来用你们的数据科学的技能来解决，为全球的发展以及可持续发展提供啊、呃、我们的解决方案。这次呢，呃，中国区的比赛将会由我们中国区中心和之江实验室共同来举办。那么我们也将会做好相关的赛事的服务工作，欢迎我们中国的青年登录中国区中心的官方网网站。了解更多的赛事信息，后续的相关信息我们也及时将在我们的网站上公布。那么欢迎大家参加。啊、uh, ，Lastly， 啊、uh, ，We welcome all the young people, young talents, and come join us. Have fun and good luck. Thank you. Thanks so much, Brian. So we will continue straight with our colleague from Brazil, Andrea. Andrea, please come in. Thank you very much, Alex. I'm really, really happy to be here. Uh, as it was mentioned before, it's the third year that we organized this event, uh, previously named the Hackathon, but it was uh, the two first were, were really a success. So we are happy to be here again. And uh, uh, okay, you can go to next, uh, Alex. Thank you very much. Um, Uh, I'm here today on behalf of the National School of Statistical Science of the Brazilian Institute of Geography and Statistics, but also on behalf of the UN Regional Hub uh, for Big Data and Data Science. That's in Brazil, but we have been supporting national statistical offices in Latin America and the Caribbean. That's the region we serve. And uh, we have been doing capacity building, holding training, uh, webinars, and also uh, the conducting some research in the in the area of uh, uh, using big data for official statistics and public statistics, involving a lot of students on this kind of work we do, especially for the research. And uh, today I will uh, uh, just uh, say some words. To, I will try as Brian switch between languages. So uh, we have uh, two main languages in the region that I spoke in the region. One is Spanish. It's not my mother tongue, but I will try to to to, to say some a few words uh, in Spanish. And then I move to Portuguese. That's the the language the, the language spoken in Brazil. Então, vocês, muito bom dia a todas e todos. É um prazer estar aqui para invitá-las e invitá-los a, a, a participar uh, na uh, UN uh, Datatom uh, uh, 2023. Uh, como nós outros sabemos, como todos sabemos, Big Data e Ciência de Dados são uma oportunidade para melhorar as estadísticas oficiais. Pero uh, nuevas fuentes de datos y nuevos métodos han que ser muy bien testados y es en esto que nosotros contamos con ustedes para hacer uh, el trabajo de, de testaje, experimentos con Big Data y otras fuentes de datos para la producción de, esta, de estadísticas públicas. Uh, además, uh, nosotros esperamos que sea una oportunidad para vivir una experiencia única, intercambiar conocimiento. Esto es lo que se vio uh, desde las últimas ediciones, mucho intercambio de conocimiento y, 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 y mucha, mucha alegría, mucha, mu mucha festividad pa, pa, por estar con, con otras personas de otros países uh, alrededor del mundo. Uh, next, please. Agora em português, muito bom dia a todas e todos. É uma alegria, realmente é uma alegria estar aqui e convidar todo mundo uh, a participar, a convidar vocês que estão aqui, mas também as pessoas que verão esse vídeo mais adiante uh, para participar da UN, Big Data, da, da UN Datatom 2023. Uh, para aqueles que não entenderam espanhol o que é em comum, Big Data e Ciência de Dados são realmente uma oportunidade, tem se mostrado uma oportunidade ao longo dos últimos anos para melhorar a produção de estatística. Uh, no entanto, precisa ser bem testado, os novos métodos, as novas técnicas e as novas fontes em si precisam ser muito experimentados. E é nessa área que vocês todos e todas podem contribuir muitíssimo com a criatividade de vocês, é, desenvolvendo aplicações, 
ações, é, fazendo experimentos. E além da contribuição que vocês darão, claro, participando do, do Datatom, uh, também tem é, o aspecto da convivência, da experiência, troca de conhecimentos, é um crescimento importante. No último ano, uh, na Datatom, no, no, que, chamado Hackathon, é, que foi realizado nas premissas do, do, do IBGE, houve muita troca, as pessoas formaram grupos e seguiram adiante é, é, com, com a amizade, com as suas parcerias. Então, dessa forma, eu, eu reforço o convite para participar dessa edição, que não é só uma competição para aqueles que chegam ao fim, mas para aqueles que, que agregam experiência ao longo do processo. Next, please, Alex. Ok, moving back to English. Uh, just a few words about the data tone in Rio. Uh, the event will be held at the same moment that's going to be held in Uruguay. So, from three to 6 uh, uh, November it's going to be uh, it's going to be held at the National Stat School of Statistical Science last year it was at the premises of IBGE and the, now it's going to be uh, at the National School of Statistical Science that's part of IBGE but it's in another building I'm saying that for the ones that knows uh, uh, the structure of IBGE in Brazil Uh, we will provide, as last year, we will provide a, a co-working space to allow interaction among, among the, the teams. We did that uh, that last year. We had a big room with different island, with different teams. So you could work apart, but you could also exchange with other teams in the in the room. Uh, we we are providing also internet connection, uh, high speed internet connection to support uh, uh, the the work that uh, you'll be doing. And uh, we will have on site team to support you uh, to mentor the, the, the all, all the work, but also to connect directly with the main team uh, holding uh, at the UNSD holding the 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 the, 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 the data tone. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, okay. obrigado, That's Andrea. Fine. That's fine. Um, thank you. So we'll continue our uh, voyage now with Therese. Therese uh, from Rwanda, please come in. Thank you, Alex. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Uh, I'm here representing uh, the National Institute of Statistics of Rwanda, but also on behalf of the regional hub of uh, for Africa. So I'm going to share a few words to encourage everyone from the region to attend this uh, data term. And uh, as you may know, uh, please go back before the first slide yes as you may know uh, the region the un regional hub for africa has a main uh, main mission to support member states in effectively using alternative data sources to be able to apply data science techniques in providing credible and insightful statistics so we have uh, main objectives in fa as facilitating projects sharing knowledge provision of training and uh, methodology collaboration so this uh, this hackathon is one of the is one of these events that will help us foster the the training and also uh, upskill our regions and uh, and members to to use data science for uh, credible information so uh, the aim of this data turn as uh, my colleagues started uh, the aim uh, include uh, to develop ideas and solutions that will help us achieve uh, SDGs, but also this is a good platform for young people, but also experts to use widely uh, different data sources and tackle, be it local, regional, but also global challenges. Next slide, please. So I encourage everyone from the region to participate, to be able to solve uh, challenges at local, regional, but also global level, but also be able to innovate, but also network. And uh, this is a good opportunity to learn and uh, turn data into uh, information. 
So uh, on the uh, on the regional level, we provide we provide satellite location for people who are nearby or who can move to Chigali. We will share more information on the satellite location where we will facilitate uh, teams that will be available to participate physically. We will, there will be a team that helping them, but also uh, there is a Slack channel. Uh, the organizing team has mentioned it, and there are more information about it, how you can connect and maybe troubleshoot possible uh, issues that you might face during the hackathon. So allow me to switch uh, to French as the language that has not yet been spoken. But before I switch, uh, I encourage this data tone is open to everyone from different backgrounds, students, government officials, academia, researchers, data related industry, civil society entrepreneurs, private sector, depending on your background, you can learn and share your innovation to tackle uh, global challenges. So I'm going to shift uh, to French for my colleagues uh, from the region who are French speaking. So, bonsoir, bonjour, uh, bon après-midi, uh, cher Fred, uh, cher sir from Afrique. Uh, uh, so, Datatone, comme uh, vous le savez, c'est c'est un datatone qui est prévu pour nous aider. Il va nous aider à. Il vise à développer des idées, des solutions pour aider à atteindre les objectifs du développement durable. Mais aussi, c'est il nous fournit une plateforme permettant aux, aux jeunes et aux experts de big data d'utiliser une grande variété de données pour aider à résoudre les défis locaux, régionaux, mais aussi mondiaux. Euh, comme euh, comme euh, ce Datatone, euh, je vous encourage beaucoup à, à, à participer et, et vous, allez à, à avoir, vous allez pouvoir euh, innover pendant de, ce Datatone, mais aussi vous, vous aurez euh, une opportunité pour collaborer avec les autres passionnés des données. Et c'est une plateforme pour euh, les participants pour renforcer vos capacités à outils et méthodes d'analyse des données, mais aussi vous aurez euh, une opportunité d'apprendre, échanger et renforcer votre, votre travail d'équipe. Donc, je vous invite à participer en grand nombre et on va, euh, on va mettre à votre disposition une, une euh, je peux l'appeler, euh, un site local pour ceux qui, qui, qui puissent euh, venir se déplacer à Kigali et, et vous, vous pouvez euh, travailler localement ici. On va, euh, on va échanger, on va partager plus d'informations sur le site, mais aussi pour ceux qui sont euh, un peu loin, vous pouvez euh, participer euh, en ligne et je vous invite, et ça sera une, euh, une opportunité et vous, vous allez me remercier après. Back to you, Alex. Merci beaucoup, Therese. Thank you so much. So we finish our journey around the world right now. Um, so I would just like to share with you a little bit of information how to apply and how to sign up for email updates. So here on the screen, you see two QR codes uh, which you can scan. The first one will lead you to the UN Datathon website and we will also share the um the 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 link in the chat and also here at the bottom the link to our mailing list um how can you stay informed so well first of all you can visit the the website as i have just uh, said or you can uh, follow us on social media so on twitter facebook instagram threads Uh, the handle for for the UN Datathon is always the same, so UN Datathon, and you can also ask questions in the UN Datathon group on the global network of data offices and statisticians at yammer.com slash UN stats, so you feel free uh, to sign up. And this is the website again with a, with a link, uh, so you can please have a look at the website. And now we will start with a Q&A session. So please ask your questions now. Type into the meeting chat or raise your hand. 
I will also um, now stop sharing my screen and will let uh, Umaima take over for the first round of questions while I will also um, allow uh, the sharing opening of the microphones and of the uh, of the cameras. So Umaima, please go ahead. Thank you so much, uh, Alex. So actually, I I'm not able to see the newest questions. I feel like we answered all of the questions so far. Abhijit, if you're on the call, are you able to see the questions after um, 8.31? I think uh, we answered. There is yeah, one question from Derek Miru. Hello, is there any sponsorship possible to attend in in person in Uruguay? So the UN does not have any official uh, sponsorship schemes or any funding available to uh, uh, send uh, the participants to uh, Uruguay in Montevideo. Or I, I guess Alex could expand on that a bit. Yeah. So um, in principle, the the coming to the on-site locations uh, is. Well, we cannot provide funding for that. Um, but if you can make it to one of the locations, that would be really amazing. But if you cannot, uh, there's always the possibility to participate in the UN Datathon uh, online, remotely with your team. So, uh, and yeah, uh, maybe I stop here. Also, I saw uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I think there's another question um, with regards to Francois uh, to set up a local hub at University of Geneva. So again, like we'll, we'll be sent like if you can send us an like an email with both the link to your data sets as well as this question, we can discuss it offline. You know, we cannot answer this right now. Yeah. Yeah, please uh, reach out to us and then we'll see how, how we can arrange things uh, and whether we can uh, set up a, a location at the University of Geneva. Um, any other questions, please feel free to write in the chat or raise your hand. Um, There's another yeah. one actually, sorry Alex, on whether basically this hackathon will have an interactive social media. So I believe we'll be using Slack or Yammer, so we're still, but it's probably going to be Slack like, like last year, where we'll be creating different channels, dedicating to technical um, data sets, networking with other people from your region, so we'll, we'll have something that will be well defined. And I also see a question in French. Uh, so it's a question about the fact that, you know, it's everything is in English. Uh, so we had teams uh, in previous editions of the hackathon that had also the Bureau of the, of, of the Language. What they did was that they uh, wrote down their um, presentation in their official language and they used a translator to translate to English. And they even presented, like they did the video in, for instance, like we had a team from Brazil uh, speaking Portuguese in their video and they used like an online translator to translate their voices, voiceover English, basically. So we don't think, you know, language should be a barrier. On the opposite, it can actually help you practice your English. And if you need to have any help with regards to translation, you can also reach out potentially to some, you know, mentors in the team who speak your language for certain parts of your presentation, whatever that is. But please do not hesitate to participate if it's just a question of the language. Yes, and this is also to confirm. So we will use uh, during the datathon itself. We will use mainly Slack as our uh, means of communication and support with the participants, and we will have staff online. Uh, maybe not all the time, all uh, almost three days uh, around the clock, but we will have staff online who will speak other languages than English. So I would assume we will have Spanish speakers, we will have French speakers, we will have probably Arabic and Chinese speakers online on the Slack. So um, don't worry about that. You can still participate. Um, are there other 
questions, Umaima Abichud, in the chat that you want to take? All right, uh, there's one question from Juliette Calvo. Uh, she has asked if we can participate individually or only as a group. Uh, last year we had, uh, uh, we did allow individual participations. So what we did was we sorted out the individual registrants into teams from the same region. Uh, but given that it wasn't as effective as it should have been, so this year we've decided not to go with individual participation. So we have to register as a team of three to five members to join the UN data talk. Yes, and this is also to confirm that so we have started with the first phase of the application process. Uh, so if you went already there in the form, you uh, you will see that uh, we are asking for the names of uh, at least three participants in your team. Uh, but please note that you will have a chance to still modify the number of the team participants and uh, the composition in the second phase of the application process, which will start in the uh, like mid September. Uh, yeah, and then the cutoff date for the formation of the teams will be likely after the um, deadline for application. The deadline for application again is the 30th of September, uh, but some modifications of the teams can still take place after that until probably we still have to define it, but probably until the 10th of October. Um, I saw also a question about uh, yeah, having a satellite location in Australia. Uh, I think Ronald already answered that. Yes, we would be happy to have that. So same basically with Geneva. Uh, reach out to us, send us an email. We will put uh, the email address in the chat uh, so you can contact us for that. And uh, any other questions, Abhijit Umaima? Yeah, so I see one on uh, from Francois about whether um, can you say a bit more about how you are helping the best teams to take their projects from prototype to production? For example, do you work with any incubator network? So um, in year one, we actually had the winning team had implemented their their work uh, in their company, so we kind of you know helped them a little bit improve their algorithms and then they were able to kind of push their dashboard into prod. Um, this year we would like actually like it's still working under like it's still work in progress, but we'd indeed like to um, work with incubators to help some of the teams put their work forward. But we we're not making any promises right now. We're still working on this. So we'll let you know a little bit closer to the uh, data on how it will go. But that's kind of the end goal is to make some of these projects into reality. Yes. Uh, right. I see one question from Wong Man Boom. For those joining online da the Datathon, uh, can the team members work from their home during the 67 hours duration? Yes, you can work from your own home, your own comfort space. It is going to be, uh, you can join in remotely and you can work with your teammates remotely from your own specific locations in your own home as well, from your systems. You would be given access to the UN Global Platform where you would be given a dedicated team workspace so you can collaborate with the team within the global platform itself. You don't have to be at a specific on-site location. You, are, you can completely join it from remotely online. Thank you. I see also a question from Tansif Ansar. Uh, is there an opportunity to engage as a volunteer in this event? And yes, absolutely. So we are, uh, we are looking for volunteers for this event. Uh, both as uh, mentors or as judges. Um, so we will have a call for both uh, later on. Um, maybe Umaima Abiches, you can say a little bit about the timeline for that. That would be great. Um, sorry, Alex. Uh, no, yeah, for I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we will be calling for mentors and uh, for the because we are receiving uh, a quite a lot of number of projects, so we would need support in the jury, and we would also need uh, support uh, during the datathon, support from mentors who are experts in the field, so that the supports can uh, the team the mentors can support the teams that are taking part in the datathon. So we will call for uh, volunteers on this. So please be note that please be on the lookout for this. Uh, we'll send an email to all of those who are registered, or you can send us an email directly saying that you would like to volunteer, and we would keep that in mind. 
Uh, yes. I also see one question from Prashant KV. Uh, yes, uh, he's asked if we should form a team before registering. Yes, you should uh, form a team before registering. Uh, but then uh, during the second stage, uh, you you would have possibilities of shifting some of the uh, information of the team. Uh, so please know that find a team before registering. And I also see one question from Karama. Uh, if, if there is a maximum age for participants, uh, there is no set maximum age for participants, but uh, there are certain award categories uh, you wouldn't uh, be eligible for if you are uh, at a certain age category. So under 32 is our definition of youth. So if you're not under the year age of 32, you would not be eligible for the youth award category. Yes, but you can still participate. So uh, yes, definitely. it's it's just uh, that for the youth award we have a maximum age but apart from that anyone who wants to can participate in this uh, datathon of course we need a little bit of uh, minimum knowledge of data science and how to handle and work with data but apart from that anyone can participate um yeah and also, please, uh, as Umaima has also uh, mentioned in the chat, please reach out to your friends, colleagues, uh, and in your offices, at your university, at your high school. So we also allow the participation of high school teams. So uh, please reach out to your friends and colleagues and make a lot of advertisement for this UN Datathon. Um, so Alex, I also have a question for Therese. Looks like there is a lot of interest in the African hub with regards to connecting to form groups within the African network, as well as just getting the contacts. Uh, Therese, is it OK for us to share like one of wh whatever email uh, you want to share so that maybe you can connect with some of the um, participants that want to be connected with you in the African hub? Is there like an email we can share with them? Uh, no problem. Uh, let me share mine via the chat. Thank you. This yeah, is it's great. Yeah, good thing to reach out to the hub so that you can form teams and just be part of the network. OK, then there's a question by uh, Brenda in Espanol. So, uh, una consulta pueden indicarnos en donde nos inscribimos para participar? Uh, sí. Si, uh, Voy a poner eh, de nuevo el enlace del sitio web del Datathon, entonces ahí se pueden inscribir para participar en el Datathon, en ahí también hay un enlace para uh, registrarse para nuestra lista de uh, email de, de, de correo electrónico. Um, any further questions? I mean, I know we are slightly over time, but I guess we can still do one minute or two. So for some urgent questions, um, I saw there was a question about the uh, lower age limit. No, <laughs> not really. But of course, uh, you need to be able to work with uh, data and so on. But as I have mentioned, we have or we had in the past also teams from high schools participating. So uh, this is totally fine. Uh, and we are happy to welcome those teams as well. Uh, there's another question in Espanol. So, ¿qué esperan de una posible participación de profesionales de las oficinas nacionales de estadísticas? Um, entonces, yo quiero reiterar que el Datathon está abierto para todo el mundo. Estamos... Uh, uh, Dando la bienvenida a todos los participantes de oficinas nacionales también. Eh, eh, de hecho, eso es una muy buena oportunidad de, de practicar, digamos, el uso de, de métodos de ciencia de datos. Eh, entonces, sí, por favor, participen eh, de, todos los, eh, de todas las oficinas nacionales también en este evento. Ok. One more question, maybe, Abhijit or Maima. I think there was a question with regards to can those with only knowledge of data analysis apply as a team? I think it's really important to emphasize this. Uh, it's not because you know some teams are going to go down the route of advanced ML models 
that you cannot apply. Like we had teams last year that only relied on statistical analysis that put together some nice visuals and put together some nice reports and they still won awards. So on the opposite, like we really want to have beginner team participate in the hackathon. It's going to be like a great experience. We had people as young as nine years old participate, so they definitely do not have any knowledge of ML, but it's like a nice first step, you know, so do apply and no worries about it. Like don't feel, um, you know, like you cannot apply because you don't know ML or like advanced machine learning or anything, you know, just go for it. Yeah. And I see one question. So that was uh, Laurentine from Cameroon uh, uh, who was looking for a team. Just to point out as well, uh, you can uh, also have teams across countries, across regions. It's possible. We will have special awards for uh, the best team by region, but it, uh, we will uh, also welcome participants to form teams across regions. So if you if you find uh, 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 colleagues from other countries, yeah, please join them. So uh, no worries. OK, so we are at 936, I guess, for, for this uh, webinar. Uh, we are come really to, to the end now. This is just to point out again. So this was the first webinar. Um, the, the next webinar will take place on September uh, 7th. And this will be on the SD, uh, youth and sorry on youth and the SDGs. Uh, so this will be our second webinar, which is targeting probably a little bit more uh, academia and, and high schools and so on. But you're all welcome to join. Uh, we will. Uh, I think I'm pretty sure it will be a very interesting event as well. And then we have still two webinars in October on the youth, uh, use of data sources and uh, methods during the datathon and we will have a pre uh, datathon webinar uh, just ahead of the datathon which will give some uh, information about the theme as well so we will have a theme for the datathon and we will reveal that in the fourth uh, webinar of our series. So now please sign up. Uh, the link was in the chat. Uh, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, it's been an amazing turnout. And uh, yeah, see you soon at the Datathon in Uruguay, China, Brazil, United Arab Emirates, and Rwanda, and also maybe possibly also in Geneva and somewhere in Australia. Who knows? So thanks everyone for joining. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you so yeah. much. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. you. That's true.